and he shoves the door open and steps in, beaming into the sunlight. Oh no! A, a, a new challenger approaching! Get ready for smash! Da, da, da. Suddenly, a tall, dark stranger appears out of nowhere, standing imposingly in front of us. Emmy flinches back, almost falling back down the stairs. Eek, hello. You scared me, Rin. Wait, isn't she? Hello. Noticing that Rin is speaking to me, Emmy looks curiously at me. You two know each other? I look confusedly at Emmy. She's that friend of yours? Rin has her turned her gaze towards the clouds drifting above the school. I didn't know you knew this person, Emmy. The awkward silence lasts only a few seconds until Emmy lets out a tiny giggle, shrugging, shrugging the coincidence off. I invited his sound for lunch. If you know him, that's just better. Oh, does this mean I don't get food? Or did you invite him for lunch without lunch? Um, neither. I have food for three. Nice thinking. They walk to the other end of the roof while I stay at the clock tower for a while, taking in the atmosphere. There's nobody else but us here. I guess the roof is not as popular as it is in other schools. A few run-down benches and tables are scattered around the edges, perhaps in an attempt to make the rooftop look less desolate. The small pebbles covering the roof rattle beneath our feet. I wonder if the pebbles would be a problem for anyone. Yeah, I guess any... Wait, no, there are stairs to the roof. The wheelchair-bound students just straight, can't, straight up can't come here. I peek through the chain-link fence to take a look at school grounds and beyond. Students are strolling in pairs and groups around the quadrangle and, and around the quadrangle and at the cafeteria. A few delivery trucks are driving past the school towards the convenience store nearby. Somewhere a watchdog barks at a passerby. Somehow, when I look towards the town center, the small town feel strikes me very strongly, almost palpably. The hectic lifestyle of big metropolises seems so far away and foreign here. Nobody has to run to catch a bus like their life depended on it, or get their senses overloaded by the neon lights and traffic jams. I feel surprisingly optimistic about this new life of mine, looking at my new hometown. Even if it's going to be mine for only one short year. Finding out about my illness and having to move away from home all came so suddenly, I haven't had the time to think about how I feel about it. You've had some time! You've had some time, you crybaby. When I step out of the shadow of the clock tower to the open, I feel warmth touching my back. The sun shines from a perfectly clear cerulean sky. A cool breeze sweeping over the rooftop makes me shiver, but only briefly. The wind carries the scent of trees and flowers, not smog and car exhaust like it used to just weeks ago. Emmy settles on a bench with Rin in tow and pr produces one big and two small lunch boxes from her bag. Come on, Isao! What are you waiting for? She is beckoning me to join them, making room on the already small bench. Ah! I seat myself on the corner of the bench to take as little space as possible. It's pretty cramped, but somehow all three of us fit on it. Impressive view. Emmy suppresses a giggle and places a lunchbox in front of Rin, hands another lunchbox to me. Here you go! Lunch as promised! Homemade, no less. I'm impressed. Wow, this looks really good. Thanks! I made them myself when I can. Make. Conversation dies off as I said about the business of feeding myself. Taking a few bites, I glance up to notice Rin deftly opening the lunchbox and popping a forkful of food into her mouth using only her feet. Even though I've seen it in before, I can't help but be impressed with her dexterity. It's also a reminder of the sort of place I'm in right now. Will I ever get used to sights such as this? I can't decide if getting used to such a thing would be a good thing or a bad thing either. What are you talking about, asshole? Does getting used to this place mean that I'm giving up on being a normal person? Or does it just mean that I'm becoming more understanding about those around me? I'm distracted from my thoughts by the sight of Emmy tearing into her lunch as if it had insul insulted her <laughs> Oh, and I gotta deliver this line right. This deserves it. I'm distracted from my thoughts by the sight of Emmy tearing into her lunch as if it had insulted her ancestors. You seem pretty hungry. Emmy looks up, mouth half full, and swallows before nodding. My morning run always works up an appetite. Which is great, because then I burn through lunch pretty quickly. It helps me keep my girlish figure. What would happen if you lose it? Would you become a man? I very nearly choke on my lunch trying not to laugh. It's a figure of speech! Does your figure have to run in the mornings too? Do you always talk like this? Talk like what? Like what? <laughs> I think that answers my question. 
Ah, uh, never mind. So, uh... I struggle to think of small talk and settle on the obvious question. How'd you two meet? Rin seems content to let Amy answer this question. Someone in the housing department thought that we'd compliment each other, so we were assigned rooms next to one another. Compliment each other? Like shoes in a suit. Huh? Emmy giggles at my confusion. Put us together and we've got our limbs! Get it? Ah. So I started helping Rin get ready in the mornings, and that was that. I mean, you... I mean, you can't help someone get dressed every morning and not get along. I see. Rin chose this moment to interject. Chooses this moment to interject. I have trouble with shirts. Right, that seems fairly obvious. Really? Kind of? This isn't helping, but at least Emmy seems to find the whole thing funny. That, combined with the fact that Rin is genuinely curious, makes me feel slightly better, and yet confused. I mean, you've got no arms. So, uh, putting on a shirt seems like one of those things that would be... difficult. You know what, I'm just gonna stop talking now. It'll save me a lot of trouble in the long run. Rin nods in what I suspect is meant to be a sage manner. I see. The conversation dies as I turn my attention back to my lunch. Rin, serial killer of conversations. It's really quite good. Emmy finishes her lunch first and makes a contented noise. So you mean she did the full-on Japanese? Ah. ah, that was good. As she busies herself with cleaning up her lunch, Rin speaks up. I'm thirsty. Oh, I almost forgot about that. Sorry. With a flourish, she reaches into her bag and removes a trio of juice boxes. She tosses me one that appears to be cranberry juice, one to Rin that appears to be some kind of strawberry milk, complete with the pink's color scheme. Do they have strawberry milk that's not pink? And keeps an equally pink box of some kind of fruit punch for herself. Rin dexterously stabs her straw through the top of her box and begins to drink. I'm once again impressed by how flexible she is, but this time I keep my comment to myself. Somehow, I don't think either Emmy or Rin are the sorts of people to think twice about the way they work around their particular disabilities. Rin especially so. Instead, she gives off the impression of being entirely unaware that she's missing any limbs at all. Whether or not that's a conscious decision is another matter. I'm honestly not sure. So is so, that? How do you like it up here? Hmm? It's quite nice, actually. I like high places for the view. Thanks for inviting me up here. And for the lunch, too. Emmy grins a thousand watt grin, pleased by my response, I suppose. No problem! Hold on. No problem! Hmm. Feel free to eat with us next time, too, okay? I won't make you a lunch, but you can bring your own up here. No lunch service? I don't know. Emmy looks mock offended. Try to take advantage of my good nature? The nerve! She giggles. Well, if that's your answer, I guess Rin and I will just keep eating lunch all alone. I'm suddenly assaulted by the most heart-rending puppy dog eyes I've ever seen as Emmy pouts. Kidding! I was kidding! I'd love to eat lunch up here again. Good location, and the company's okay, too. Emmy frowns a bit at my declaration of okay, but seems happy enough that I've accepted her invitation. I guess this makes us friends now. Or at least acquaintances. The lunch bell rings, signaling a return downstairs. That's a hell of a bell. Rin, you didn't finish your lunch again! I wasn't that hungry. If you don't eat more, you're gonna fade away! Rin shrugs if, as if this is an acceptable risk. Come on, we'd better get going. The three of us head down the stairs together. The afternoon class passes. Once again, I find myself without a plan for something to do after school, so I head to the library and to return a couple of the books I finished reading. Walking inside, I see that there are about as many students here as there were on Tuesday, all the more evident from the almost total silence enveloping the room. As I drop the books I borrowed into the return slot in the counter, Yuko suddenly pops up from behind it, quite startled from the banging they make as they hit the trolley next to her. Yeah, Twitch is just a nightmare. Ah, sorry Yuko, I didn't mean to startle you. What? Silent. No, it can't be. It can't be! Don't you dare. It's down to 70 for some reason, let's fix that. No, no, that's fine. It happens a lot. I'm used to it by now. 
Um, can I help you? It's okay, I think I know where everything is. Thanks anyway. Man, his cell has such an ugly color of green for the protagonist. I suppose I'll grab another book or two while I'm here. There's not much else to do, and after reading so much during my stay in the hospital, it's become a hard habit to break. I can't find a club to join, though. I wander down to the fiction section towards the back of the library, scanning the bookshelves for anything that catches my eye. It might be your headphones. As I do, I look over to the corner where Hanako has been the last time I was there, not really expecting anything to come of it. Surprisingly, though, she's there, recycling that art asset, absorbed completely in a th fairly thick book. I decide against intruding on her like last time and get back to finding reading material. After an indiscernible amount of time spent perusing the aisles, I finally decide on a couple of books and get to get and slide them off the shelf. So I feel like that was a missed opportunity. I feel like we screwed up the first time we talked to Hanako, and that made her not talkable to uh, this time. With a minimum of fuss, I quickly walk over to the counter, check out my books, and pop them into my bag as I walk out. By the time I leave the main building, sunset isn't too far away. A small trickle of students remain, but the majority have left, presumably to their homes and dorms. I guess I need to buy some supplies. I can't live off cafeteria food and eating out for my entire stay here. As I leave for the gate, I make a few loud stretches to try to stave off the tiredness that's accumulated over the week. After passing through and rounding the corner, I see a solitary figure walking downhill towards the small town below. The color of her hair and tapping of her cane are unmistakable. It's best, girl. I quickly walk up to her, which seems to catch her attention without a word needing to be said. Hi, Lily. She takes a moment to place the voice, slightly adjusting her head to face a bit more towards the source of my voice as she does. Hisao? Yep, that's me. She seems to have a good memory for voices. The fact that she actually remembers is a pleasant surprise. Good evening. What brings you here? Once again, she gives a small, polite bow, and once again I reply in kind before realizing, realizing that I needn't do so. I'm just going into town. You? My, my, what a coincidence. That was Ara Ara. That is palpably Ara Ara. Ara Ara. Doing the same thing, eh? Mm -hmm. I usually go shopping on Fridays. She pauses for a moment, suddenly looking a little lost. That said, Hanako usually comes to town. Oh, everything's just completely ruined? Alright. Yeah, Twitch has done bad jobs. I'll look into how I can fix that. So that's too bad. Uh, thanks for coming out, and see you next time.